Hello guys, this is Coder Code and this is the first lecture of Java Design Pattern. In this lecture, we are going to basically get started with the creation of design pattern and we are going to start with uh, we are going to get started with the singleton pattern, which is the easiest one to learn and implement. All right. So let's see what we are going to cover in this lecture. So of course, we will start with the creational design patterns. Right. So a creational design pattern provides various object creation mechanism. So all of the creational design patterns give you different ways to create objects of classes. Right. For different scenarios, there are different design patterns, uh, which gives you different ways you can create um your objects of classes right and we'll we'll go through all of the scenarios as we go through the different creational patterns all right so which increase flexibility and reuse of the existing code this is kind of uh the main goal of all of the design patterns the flexibility and the reuse of the existing code all right so as i said again we are going through the creational design patterns we give which gives you different ways you can initialize or create objects of classes right and each design pattern uh targets a specific problem and a different scenario that we'll go through in the lecture itself all right so in this lecture we are going through the singleton pattern all right so we are going to cover the singleton pattern so singleton pattern as the name suggests this pattern makes sure that only one instance of a class can be created so you have a class you have certain uh, use case that you have a class and you want only one object to be created of that class not more than one right let's say you have a uh, DAO class uh, data access, access object that does the uh, talking to the database and the and the services right you want only one object of the DAO class to be created because you only want one connection to the database all right so in such scenarios there are many other scenarios uh where singleton pattern can be used so it makes sure that only one instance of class is created so so where to use uh so if you have a resource that will be accessed from multiple parts of the code so you have a resource which can be accessed from multiple parts from the code itself right and so in such scenario you would want the single pattern to be uh, followed you only want one entry point to that resource right so so for example the log files right so if you have log files if you have worked with logs so each of the class if you are properly following the uh, the the standards so there are almost every class is required to uh, log because if, if the class is doing important work for example you have created a class that does the job of transactions it can be any kind of transaction any important kind of transaction like an actual transaction uh, transfer of money or transaction into the database insertion creation or deletion from the database you would like to log it somewhere so that later if you want to debug it you can go through the logs and get some extra details right so if you have logs there are so many other classes so many classes which which uh, uh add details into into the logs right and usually we have only one log file or one log database so we have that resource and there are so many other places from where we want to access this resource right and in such scenarios what you want to do you only want to have one uh one object of that access uh class right a class that gives you access to that resource you would want only one object of that right so in such scenarios you can go with the singleton pattern use case one again uh login file login file as we have already discussed and another one can be printer spooler uh, so, sorry printer spooler spooler is the software that does the job of queuing up the jobs and getting it printed through the printer okay so it takes care of queuing the jobs multiple uh multiple jobs can ask to print something right and it it has a queue it stores the uh, job in there that i want to print this 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 and then gives command to the printer to print something right so it has the queue itself so you don't need to have multiple objects of the spooler you can only have one uh, one object and you can just ask it to print this it maintains the queue itself so you don't have to uh, you don't need multiple objects of it in, in fact we shouldn't have multiple objects of it because it takes care of that itself uh, having a queue right so these are some of the scenarios where you can go with the singleton pattern
now how you are going to implement it so first of all we want to make sure that only one instance of that object is created right sorry one instance of that class is created how do you do that so first of all we need to make sure that no uh, object initialization is not possible from outside the world how you can stop that just make the constructor private right if the constructor is private you can't create any instance of that class right and since we want to make sure that only one instance is created we need to take care of the uh, responsibility of creating the object ourselves for that we'll define uh, a static instance inside the class itself and that will be the only instance that will be used right so we'll only have one instance and how can the outside world access that just create a get instance or uh, get object function that gives you that instance and make sure that the object is initialized only once right so create a static function get instance that returns the class instance make sure <clears throat> if uh, instance is null initialize otherwise return the instance right so if i show you the code it is a very simple code so here it is so i have a main class right for the examples and then we have a logger which does the job of logging uh, as of now it only logs onto the console the black and white screen that we have right here, here is the logging function you provide a message and it logs it inside of it i have a name right this is uh, for a specific for, uh, purpose to to confirm that only one instance is created right i'll try to create two different instances with different names right and to make sure that only one instance is created uh, when i'm going to print the name from two different objects it should be same Th that's the only purpose of it right and here is the you see are uh, the instance we have the logger class and we have its instance here and which is static only one instance so again the constructor if you see is private so it can't be called from the outside and hence no object of this class can be created right? and this is the get instance class so other classes should be able to get the instance of this class to work with it right and for that we must have a get instance class or get object class whatever you would like to create right <clears throat> so this is my logger class we won't go much into detail of this I'll, I'll explain this in a moment and this is the example so first of all uh how we are going to implement the uh, singleton pattern again create a single uh, static instance make the constructor private provide a static function to access that instance as simple as that right yeah and uh, f since this is a logger class, I have created a log uh, log function also, so that we can call it, right? So yeah, this is how you implement a singleton pattern. But there are so many issues with it, and we'll go through that uh, one by one. So first of all, here is one of the examples. So what I'm doing, I'm I'm trying to get the instance of that logger, right? Since the get instance returns the object. I'm calling that and I'm creating basically two different instances of it with two different names, right? And I'm trying to print the log message. So if you see here, when it prints, it prints the name, which is this. If two objects are created with two different names, as I'm trying to do with foo and bar, uh, in the output, we should get two different names, right? So if you run it, for example, important thing here, here, when you're trying to get the instance, how you'll make sure that only one instance is created, you'll check where, whether this static instance is null or not. If it is null, that means the object has not been initialized yet. So here you will initialize it. You can, uh, you can call the constructor from inside the class because private methods are accessible within the class right and that's why you can call the constructor here now you are initializing it and then only you are returning it and if i'm trying to create i'm trying to get the instance again remember this won't be true because instance won't be null and hence we'll return the older one itself that's why this is how we are making sure that only one instance of the class is created right here i'm trying to get two different instances but if i'm trying to get it the next time i should get the first one only and hence 
the name must be foo in that also and if i'm printing two different messages logger one and logger two the name in both of them should still be same because it's the same object so if you run it from the main class i've created main class only to run the examples and i have saved all of the example in the example class so as of now i'm running this example which is this one okay single threaded example why is it named such because we are not using multi-threading right and when you execute main class by default only one uh, one thread is created that's why this is a single threaded example so if you run it you see two logs will be printed and both of a name of both of the object is foo because when you're going to create the instance again it won't create it because this won't be true instead it would return the old object itself and that is why when we are uh, getting the two different uh, instances both of them are pointing to the same object and that's why we are getting the same name all right so this is in the uh, single threaded example what if we are working in multi-threaded environment what will happen then let me show you that also so if you try to run the same example in multi-threaded environment that means we have multiple threads and if you have more than one thread uh basically threads execute in parallel right so i'm creating two different threads thread a and thread b in the first thread i'm getting an instance with the name foo and print in the message thread one right in the second thread I'm again getting the instance with the name bar and uh, printing the message thread two. Here I have started both the threads, so they will start executing in parallel. See what happens when two uh, two calls, two functions calls start. Uh, basically, when you start executing two threads, they start running in parallel. And you see here in the constructor, I have this line. This is to make sure if any thread comes here, it is stuck here for two seconds. Why is that so? I'll explain in a moment. So if I take you back here, you see in single thread environment, there is no issue. If you're trying to create two different instances, uh, the second one will be the same as the first one, right? No issues there because what happens in single threaded environment, one line of code execu uh, is executed and then the other line just below that is being executed um, is executed next next after that so this line will be executed first that means the instance is already created right instance is not null once this line is executed now if you try to ex execute the second line uh, the instance won't be null that is not true with the multi-threaded environment both of them will try to execute at the same time right so if both of them are trying to execute at the same time, let's say uh, we have we are trying to create two different two different objects, right? Here and here. Since these are two different threads, they will try to execute in parallel. It won't wait for first uh, first line to complete. And sorry, it won't wait for this thread thread to completely execute and then start executing this. They won't start. Uh, they they will start executing in parallel, right? So what will happen? the third one will come here and see if the instance is null yes instance is null so what it will do it will call the constructor and will get stuck here for one second in this example it's one second in my example i'm using two second right to make sure that thread actually gets stuck i mean for a long time i'm making the thread sleep for two seconds so the first thread will be stuck here and since they both are trying to uh, execute parallelly the other thread will come here the second thread first one is stuck here and if you won't come back from the constructor this line won't be executed and hence instance will be null since thread one is still stuck, stuck there instance is still null and uh, the other thread will come and check if the instance is null yes instance is null because this one is stuck here so it will also execute this line so both of them will try to create two different objects right so if you come back here just making sure that the thread is stuck here you know? so if we come back here both of them are trying to create two different instances 
with the name foo and barf and both of them are printing uh messages right thread one and thread two if we run this example the multi-threaded example let's see what happens see one of the object object is having name foo another one is having bar that means we have got two different objects right which should have not been happened but that happens if you're working with multi-threaded environment you need to make sure that certain parts of your code excuse me certain parts of your code are only accessed one after the other all right basically no two threads or multiple threads should be able to access that part simultaneously right and in our case it is this part we have clearly seen if two threads try to check if the object is null so should i create one if more than one threads try to do that they may end up creating more than one object we need to make sure this line of code these line of codes are only accessed one thread at a time to do that what you can do this piece of code you can synchronize right so in java you can synchronize it for logger class logger dot class the class name is logger right and inside of it just paste this so what happens whatever is written in this block inside this block will be accessed by one thread only at a time all right so this is synchronized among the threads now if you go back and run the same example again see foo foo right that means only one instance is created so this is how you properly implement singleton pattern even for multi-threaded environment right this works well for single threaded as well as multi-threaded environment as we have uh, talked uh, earlier uh, this works well in an environment in a situation where you really 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 want to make sure that only one instance of a cert of a class is created right so yeah this is all about a uh, singleton pattern and how you can implement it uh, this is all for this lecture thank you guys for watching and till the next video drops keep coding